special segment with you that we're doing today. And I have someone that I have long admired, and he was gracious enough to uh, raise us with his presence today to answer our questions. You all may not know him, but he's done so much work on behalf of the people. His name is Yehoshua Ephraim Doctor, Yehoshua Ephraim. And he's done groundbreaking research on BSA, correct, Doctor? Yes, correct. The E1B1A. And today he's going to answer all of our questions concerning that, his great work. And um, we're just going to dive right on in. Now, Doctor, I want to say to you that um, I have some uh, questions that I formulated, and I'm going to go over them. But I know that you're going to. Um, elaborate and, and fill us in with some more things because oh, I might goodness. have uh, I might have missed some things and the people really right. have to get this information. This is extremely important for us as a people to understand what the E one B one A is all about. I had no idea what it right. was myself. Right. So but before we do that, let me just thank you. Thank you for all of your work, all of your research. And uh, thank you for your patience and dealing with the people. Thank you for uh, allowing us to have you for uh, our conference. And thank you for your time. So, well, you're, you're very welcome, sister. It's, it's by grace and mercy of the most high. And, and you know, and it's not a fake act of humility on mine. I always defer to him. Because it's, it's because of him I'm here. It's because of him I was able to bring this information forth. Because then we'll get into the interview a little later as far as the genetics and being a scientist and all that. You know, I'm far from unlearned. Uh, I'm a scholar, but not in geneticism, not in science. But I, but I was equipped uh, with with my intelligence and with, with the revelation from the Most High to bring this forth to our people and make it as plain as I could. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. Um, everyone, please stand up. The doctor's going to break it all down. He knows how to do it in simple terms. You know, I've tried to formulate the questions that I speak with you. You are honest with wanting to ask. And anything that the mind might have to miss, I'm sure that he's going to just go ahead and fill in the gap. Okay? Now, that said, 
all meals either came from ham, shim, or jacket. That, that's it, right? All meals. Negroes, or our people, have been lied to since our ancestors' arrival here in North America and all over the transatlantic, via the transatlantic slave trade. And we were told that we were from the bloodline of Ham. Okay, now let's pause that for a minute. In the continent of Africa, of all the dark races, there are basically two classifications of dark races in Africa based on the region and where your ancestors dwell at that time. You're either going to be a Hamitic African or you're going to be a Shemitic African. Obviously, the Hamitic Africans come from the bloodline of Ham. The Shemitic Africans come from the bloodline of Shem. Now, now we have, I have that frame. Let, let me continue. Now, the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, have you heard of that? Yeah. Okay, that reference, it says plainly that Ham became the progenitor of the dark races of Africa. And then it went on to include the dark races that Ham became the progenitor of. And that would have been, well, that would be the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the original Canaanites or the Africans, those who dwell in the land of Canaan before our people possessed it, when Yahushua ran them out of there, and our people possessed it, that's the promised land. Well, the Hamitic Africans actually lived there before we took it over, right? So that would be the original Canaanites or the Africans and the Libyans, but it said, not the Negroes. Now that's crucial, because wait a minute, all of our lives we were taught and told that we were from the bloodline of Ham. But the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary says that, yes, Ham did become the progenitor of those dark races, but not us. That's a key point. So now, with that said, my pro the way I processed information, the way I looked at that was like, okay, so if the Negroes or our people are not of Ham, that only leaves two people, that only, that only leaves two bloodlines we're potentially from. That would be Japheth or Shem. And I think we pretty much know that we're not from chat, okay? So basically, that, that scripture was telling us plain as day, the Negroes are not from Ham, we're actually from Shem. So now at this point, my mind is really one, you know, it's going 100 miles a minute. Wow, you mean to tell me Negroes are from Shem and we're not from Ham? So now with that said, if that passage is true, then by genetics or by our DNA, that means that our DNA would not match those dark races that the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary said Ham became the progenitor of. All right, follow me? So now with that said, what I had to do was I had to establish the Y DNA of those dark races. So I had to do a lot of in-depth research, genetic research, to find the Y DNA haplotype of those races, and then on top of that, find out what's the Y DNA haplotype of Negroes, because we only, we only have one, all right? So now with that said, my research found out that the Y DNA haplotype of those dark races that Ham became the progenitor of is E1B1B. The Y DNA haplotype of me and all of our people, Negroes, is E1B1A. Now, to the unlearned, they will say, well, gosh, you know, there's only one letter, you know, E1B1A, E1B1B, wouldn't that mean that we're still kind of related? Um, no. What that one letter means is that we are from two different bloodlines. That's what that means. Our, our people's DNA does not match any of those groups that the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary said Ham became the progenitor of. Now, that's crucial. Because they said we were Africans and we were, and, and Africans sold other Africans into slavery. Well, that's not true. Because, yeah, we might, you, you, you can technically say we're Africans, but our people dwell in Northeast Africa, which would make us Hebrew Israelites by our DNA. Okay? We didn't, we didn't start out in West Africa. That's where we were sent, into, our ancestors were sent into slavery from. Because we, we fled there to escape further Roman persecution between 70 and 73 AD when they destroyed Jerusalem. Okay, you know, that was already prophesied by the Most High in Yeshua. Or for those who know him as that Jesus prophesied that that was going to happen. And then at that point we were scattered. All right, so um, and let me continue. 
since I just had to frame that real quick. Um, when it said not the Negroes, that would be us. Uh, and all the other Negro influenced races all over North America, Central America, the Caribbean, and the world. Because remember, the most likely he's going to scatter us throughout all the nations of the earth. So when the, when, the, when the slave ship dropped off different slaves in the you know, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, that's why all, all of those places have uh, a race of people that carry the E1B1A, Y, D, and the apple type. Those are our people. Those are the, the, the ancestors and descendants of the slaves that were dropped off there. Okay, now let, let me just interrupt you just for a minute. Sure, sure, sure. Because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I'm following the correct. Sure, problem. Um, so they were Cam, they were Shem, and Yaku. Mm -hmm. Okay, and all of them are descendants of Cam. No. No. Noah. Noah. Those are three sons, yes. They're, they're all descendants of Noah. Mm -hmm. and we are from Shem because it's genetically impossible, according to the, uh, the, um, the handle for the. Uh, what did you call it? A Bible? Simon, Bible dictionary. Mm -hmm. Bible dictionary. It was mm -hmm. impossible for us to be able to for, yeah, yeah. Right, well, the Zondervan Convict Bible dictionary said that Ham became the progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes. So that set, that set in motion all my genetic study, because if that was true, then I, could, I had to genetically prove that, which is what I did. So it's how I genetically prove that that scripture is actually true. And there's actually people who try to discredit that that script, that that uh, passage in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. But here's the thing, you can say what you want, but it's genetically true, though. We're not the same people. We do not have the same DNA as those dark races that Ham became the progenitor of, which means we are from a completely different bloodline. We're not from Ham, we're from Shem. Okay. By way of Jane. <laughs> okay. That's okay, it's cool. Um, okay, so now, uh, that passage in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary actually stood up to genetic scrutiny and proved true. Because extensive genetic research discovery and revealed that the Y DNA of all those dark races, like I said, that Ham became the progenitor of the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Africans, and the Libyans is E1B1B, and our Y DNA haplotype is E1B1A, proving genetically and conclusively that Negroes are not from the bloodline of Ham, as we have been told and lied to all these years. And we're actually from Shem by way of Jacob, which makes us Semitic, and the children of the promise because we come through Isaac. So, because you know the Arab, the, the, the original Ishmaelites are Semitic too. They come from, they're, they're Semitic as well, but they, they're not. The children of the promise, we are. We're, we're the children of the children. See, because the promise went through and the covenant was with, with Isaac. Hallelujah. That's what we come through. Hallelujah. That's pretty much that. Okay, well, um, my next question is sort of a, um, it's a little kind of mind listening to um, mm -hmm. and you talk about the teenagers. Now, you know, we're, we all watch the uh, CSI and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. We learned about a lot about the DNA through watching that particular crime scene. So they always talk about mitochondrial DNA. You know, um, uh, remember the trial of OJ and everything, and they talked about the mitochondrial DNA. Now, mm -hmm. how does that differ? Because we always thought that they came from the mother, and you're saying that we go through the Y and not the X. Right? Well, what's the problem? How is, uh, so why are they telling us that they go through the mother's um, genes, or the mitochondrial DNA as opposed to the DNA that they're Because the simple answer is they would be unable to prove their genealogy through the through Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob if they went through the male, the male line, and they know that. That's that. I mean, that's the simple answer. They would be unable to prove that they're Israelites by, by genetics if they, if they did that. The more, no one is authorized to go against what the most. The most I said that, that their, their genealogy is established through the male. No one is authorized to change that. Wow. Okay. And that's in Torah. So if you if, if, if you profess to be a Torah yet you want to make your own rules, then then no. That that's just that's that's an emphatic. 
No, you, you can't do that. Okay, the, your, your bloodline, to establish or reckon your genealogy, you have to go through your father. Period, point blank. And the story, you know what's, 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 what's interesting about the whole mitochondrial thing is that a lot of our uh, Hebrew sisters, they have the mitochondria that shows that they actually are Hebrew Israelites. That, that's what's kind of weird about that. So you're talking about going through the woods. So if you go through, like, like I'm sure if you took one, you would, you, you would be in half your group L3E. L3E is the female mitochondrial version of E1B1A. That's how you can tell a female is Hebrew Israelite. My, like my mother, my mother is half your group L3E. My father is E1B1A7A. So I'm, I'm Hebrew Israelite on both sides. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go to our next question. Okay. Um, I just said it for just one second. Yeah, no problem, no problem at all. <laughs> oh, all right. How did, you get, how did you get involved in all of this? Were you, as a child, did you want to be a scientist? Or how? Well, I guess you kind of answered that question. But, but no, no, I, I, got it. I, I got an answer. Number, that's, that's number two on the list. <laughs> actually, you know, um, as a child, and I, I, I don't even get an opportunity to actually view, you know, I have like a kind of testimonial video. When I, I was a very, what they would call, I guess, a kind of illuminated child. I was, I was very smart. I was, um, and it's like I had the best of both worlds. You know, the little dudes, little guys respected me. And, you know, little girls like me, you know, so I had the best of both worlds. And um, I knew, I knew from a long time, it was just, you know, I was just different. And I always knew that I felt protected and, and things came easy to me in terms of knowing the answer to things. And I was just well, I was very mature for my age. You know, at eight, nine years old, I wasn't thinking like the average eight or nine year old. I just wasn't. You know, the average, the, 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 I, I didn't play with toys, didn't interest me. I did. I was. I was a different kind of child. So with that said, you know, I never wanted to. Oh, I never aspired to be a, a, a scientist or a geneticist. I just had the. Uh, I was blessed uh, with the intelligence quotient to be whatever I wanted to be, really. So I read a lot. I read a lot. My grandfather, God bless his soul, always told me, "Boy, if you want to talk about something, you better know what you're talking about." And he knows. As simple as that sounds, I took that to heart. You know, because I always felt like if I said something, I want to be respected. I want to know what I'm talking about. And I wanted to stand up to scrutiny. If you want to go check what I said is true, then you can do that. That's right. So I've always taken what my grandfather said to heart, even to this day. Like, if I say something, I'm, I'm going to be able to back it up. So that's why I don't really, I don't build with a lot of different people. Because, you know, I just, my thing is, you know, uh, I don't mind sharing information. I don't mind enlightening. I don't mind, and, I'm, and I still, you know, I'm, I'm enlightened as well. I mean, I'm, I'm enlightened every day, you know, but I don't have time to waste, right? So, no, I didn't have those aspirations, but um, what got me started in this whole journey, I, you know, I, I really feel in my heart of hearts, I was chosen. This was my assignment. Because I'm going to be, I'm totally honest with you, sister. I had my reservations of even doing this. I said, you know what? Our people, they're not going to listen. They're hard-headed. You know, I just really, I, I wanted to pull a Jonah. And I wanted to run. I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I, did, I did not want to do it. But if you know as well as I do, the most I, you know, says you're going to do something, no was not even in the equation. So I said, okay, I, I submitted and, you know, um, I, as I was reading the book of Deuteronomy, it was prophesying that our people's plight uh, from Exodus out of Israel to the slave ships of the transatlantic slave trade, I mean, everything was mine. I was, I was just blown away with just how our people fixed every curse. Yeah. See, the people... And, and, and you know, I'm not, I don't want to be disparaging, but, but I got to be real. I'm going to be real with my speaking to my people right now. The people that occupy Israel today and have been since 1948, they do not fit the curses in Torah. It's, it's, just, it's just a fact. They do not. The, Torah, the, the, the book of Deuteronomy said that we were going to go back into slavery by way of slave ships. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. It said that when we got to this land that we didn't know of, that we were going to have children. We were going to enjoy them because they were going to go into slavery. Okay? And I can go on and on and on. So I'm, I'm, I'm reading all this stuff. And, you know, me being me, I'm like, okay, I wanted proof that this is who we are. Okay? It's one thing to believe something. Okay. But it's something totally different to prove that it's true. You can believe what you want. That doesn't make it true. So, again, me being me, 
I was, I was blown away. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I need proof of this. And, and if this is true, if what these, and what these curses and what this book is saying is true about me and my people, then we have to have the DNA or genetic proof to prove it. And that's what kind of set the framework for me going on this on this research. So now, with that said, I'm going to explain for the first time ever. I never even explained this in any of my videos. I have 16 of them. I never explained my process for how I came into this whole E1, B1A, and, but I'm going to explain it here now exclusively for the very first time. All right, because you're special. Oh my goodness, I'm just going to chill on. Really, and I'm going to do it here for the very first time. So now, what I did was, this is my process. All right. First, I identified the people who were mostly on those slave ships via the transatlantic slave trade. That was number one. And what I found was most of them were Shemitic Africans. They were Yoruban, what we call modern day Yorubans, Igbos, and mostly other Negroes from different parts of West Africa somewhere. See, West Africa was the slave hub, okay? Now, so once I identified the people now, now and this is kind of important to know too, there were some Hermetic Africans that were involved in the transatlantic slave trade, but I think they were more a result of collateral damage. They kind of got caught up in the whole, you know, because they weren't, Africans were selling Hebrew Israelites into slavery. They were not selling other Hermetic Africans. That's, that's just false. That is a false and, and, and gross misconception of what happened and how our people got here. West Africans were selling our people, Hebrew Israelites, into slavery, not other Hermetic Africans. So I want to say that now. So once I identified who those people were on those slave ships, so now you know what came next. So once I identified the people, now I identified what was they why the DNA haplotype. So when I researched it, researched those races of people, and I found out, and that's how I found out that they were mostly E1B1A. So now it's coming together now. Okay, it said, your people were going to go back into slavery by way of ships, okay? Who was on those ships? The Rubens, Ebos, you know, other other races from West Africa somewhere, you know, whatever. And they were all mostly E1B1A. Now, with that said, I uh, I wanted to find out uh, about my DNA. So on that information, once I identified the people and I identified their Y DNA. I wanted to, to get a DNA test myself to prove, you know, or establish my lineage. And sure enough, I took a DNA test through, uh, and I, met, I went through 23andMe.com uh, for $99. And sure enough, it came back, uh, my Y DNA haplotype is E1B1A, 7A. Now, that 7A is important because of the E1B1A, there are several subgroups of, of, of it that fall under the E1B1A. Why is that? I'm going to answer it real quick. I know people are wondering, well, why is all why is all the subgroups? E1B1A literally was one man, or what in genetic they call a common ancestor. That E1B1A literally belonged to one man that spread to everybody. And that one man was Jacob. Jacob's Y DNA haplotype was E1B1A. Now I'll get into the process of how I, you know, got, got it all traced back and all that because I get a lot of smart aleck like, questions like, oh, no one has any DNA of Moses and Jacob. So how do they know what that's their Y DNA habitat and so forth and so on? But those are the words of, of, of people who are who are filled with the spirit of God anyway. They have no intention on embracing the truth at all. So I really don't entertain that, right? Because if you're, if you're intelligent and you know how to research, you know how to come to logical conclusions, you can, you can pretty much figure out anything if you have the intellect and the, and the, the, the intellectual capacity, right? So anyway, that said, my, my YDD came back, I was e one b seven a So wow, now my mind is like, oh wow, so I'm one, of, I'm one of them, I'm one of the people from those, those slave ships, I'm, I'm, you know, those are my ancestors. So what I did was, I took the e one b seven a and I researched that like it was no tomorrow. Who are these people? Where are they? You know, I, I, I mean, man, I, it was pretty, it was pretty extensive what I did. So now, short story, short version, what I found out is that the majority of the, of the, of the, of the Negroes that possesses the E1B when they suddenly like B, 
There's a percentage of us here in America, obviously, right? Um, there's a percentage of us in Puerto Rico, right? And this is, this is where it's interesting. Um, but the majority of the people that, that possesses the E1, B1, A70 are the Yorubans. Okay? So my, my initial ancestry goes back to Yoruba. I'm going to get into some of the Yoruban Jews. <clears throat> so now, I'm continuing to research, and what did I find out? I found out that the Yorubans are actually from the tribe of Ephraim. Okay? They're from the tribe of Ephraim. All right? And, 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 and yeah, they're from the tribe of Ephraim. And, and it's, it's, it's weird because uh, that, and we'll get into that in a little later on about the 12 tribe chart, but ironically, in that 12 tribe chart, they said that, that, that the Puerto Ricans are tribe of Ephraim. I thought that was pretty ironic. That, that Ephraim is there in Puerto Rico because I traced them. I know for a fact that genetically there are Ephraimites there in Puerto Rico. Not all of them, though. Not all of the Puerto Ricans are Ephraim. Only the one because that's the E1B, 187. All right? But yeah, I just thought that was really ironic. So, so that, that, was, that was the process I went through to um, discover who was on those ships and what their, their wide DNA haplotype was and everything like that. And, uh, and then I researched the E1B, 187, which is what I am, and found out that the people that possess that particular haplotype are actually from the tribe of Ephraim. And, and, and see, here's the thing. You have to remember, this, this lie, that it's, it's been pretty elaborate, it's been a long time. But you know Psalms 83 and 4 said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel will be among in remembrance to them. Well, again, that doesn't fit the people that's, that's, you know, that occupied Israel. That doesn't fit them. It's our people who's lost. It's our people who have no idea that they're Israelites by nationality and by blood. No man can dispute what I'm saying. That, that whole lie about Haparoot J and all these other weird Haparoots and Semitic and E and E, that's, that's, that's lies. They can't, they, they, it, it will not stand up to genetic scrutiny. See, when, you, when you're unlearned and someone tells you something, you have, you have one of two choices. You can either accept what they're saying because you don't know, or you can go and research it yourself and find out, right? All right. Okay. For the most part, our people just accepted what we were told. We were told we were from the bloodline of Ham. We were told that, you know, our people were just slaves. We were nobody. We're nothing. We were told that we accepted it. Hook, line, and sinker. They, they taught us how to eat the wrong foods. They gave us pork. We had dietary laws. We didn't eat that stuff in Northeast Africa and Israel. No. We had dietary laws. They taught us how to hate each other. They it was the hate that hate produced. They taught us all these things. They gave us a false religion. What did the Most High tell us? We should have no other gods before him. That includes Jesus. I love Yeshua. I, I love him. I represent for him. But he is not God. He is the son of God. And, and because we were taught, our people was taught to make him a God, we are so, our people are so far away from the Most High. I mean, we're talking almost 400 years of this stuff. You see what I'm saying? I'm a foreign in here. We've been taught this stuff. So here some guy comes and says, you know what? Uh, that's not true. We were lied to. They don't look at me like I'm crazy. Well, somebody has to do research, and he proved your heart. Yeah. Ephraim and a lot of us refer to Ephraim. How is Ephraim different than the other 
Well, it's not so much that he's different, it's that each subgroup of the Ewan unit represents a different tribe. That's, that's what that is. Like there's, there's E1B1A 8A, there's E1B1A 7, there's different subgroups of the E1B1A, and that represents all the different tribes, basically. As long as they have that E1B1A designation, that's Jacob, all day. One man, E1B1A, has passed that to all of his sons and their seeds. So if you're E1B1A, it doesn't even matter what, what your subgroup is. You're Jacob. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. it. I'm going to go to my next question. Sure, sure. Um, now, the there is an awakening now of our audience. Mm-hmm. They like a, what was like a you know, mm-hmm. a, a, a sleeping giant book. Everyone reads really examining their rules and spiritual, cultural, and all of this is uh, taken up by the form. You know, there's new things. How do we determine our limits? But you went to this. I want to know. I have no idea of who I am. I, I don't know how many ideas I have to teach you Israel. So how do I determine my language? I go and I take that same sense of people. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Now we're gonna, we're, and I, we're gonna do, we're gonna go scripture because a lot of people try to speak against uh, DNA or DNA testing, and I'm gonna show those unlearned ones where they're wrong. Okay, the lineage and the genealogy of the children of Israel was of the utmost importance to the Most High. Okay, it says specifically in Chronicles nine and one, quote. So all Israel were reckoned by genealogies, i.e. had their bloodline established, and behold, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel. Okay? So what that says is all Israel, it didn't say some of Israel, it didn't say the northern kingdom of Israel, it didn't say the southern kingdom, it said all of Israel had their bloodline established. So if you claim to be an Israelite, you have to have your bloodline established to Jacob, because that's who seeds we go through to establish our identity as the Hebrew Israelites. Okay? So now with that said, the absolute only way to establish our DNA to go to that man is through DNA testing. Because when when the Romans decimated Jerusalem between 70 and 73 AD, the holy genetic line was broken. Okay, had that, had that incident never happened, you and I would be able to trace our lineage right straight to Northeast Africa, right straight to Israel. Okay, had that never happened. But that event did happen. So guess what? So when, when our people made that final exodus because of the, the Roman Jerusalem destruction, well guess what? The E1B1A went with us. Because <laughs> we, were, we were leaving. We, some of us were sold to Morocco and slavery, we were in North Africa. Some of us fled to West Africa to escape, you know, we were just, the e one people there was just on the move, but we were up out of Israel. That's why the, the majority of our DNA points to West Africa now, even to this day. So now, without getting too far along and we're off on a tangent, the absolute only way to establish your identity as a child of Israel is through your DNA. Now what I did, with, with the most high, blessed me with, with the knowledge of us and how to do that. First of all, identifying what it is. Because we were lied to for so long. Our people didn't know what no E1B1A and no DNA and how DNA proves that we Israel. We was, we was on that. We just was on a simple belief. You know, with the, with the curses and, and, the, and, the, and the Torah, you know, and, and that was a reasonable belief. But now with this DNA, we now have genetic inclusive proof of who we are. I totally prove that we are not from the bloodline of Ham. Stop that lie. That will not hold up in genetic, uh, under genetic scrutiny. Matter of fact, that wouldn't hold up in court. They couldn't prove that. They couldn't prove that Negroes were from Ham. They couldn't prove that we're not Israelites. They couldn't prove that, but guess what? I can prove that we are. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, so, so with that said, we have to get a DNA test. And the DNA test, like I said, for males, it has to be E1B, that has to be a Y DNA haplotype, E1B1A. If as a male, your, your, your Y DNA haplotype is E1B1A, you're the seed of Jacob. If you're a female, if your mitochondria is L3E, 
you're, 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 you're a Hebrew. Now, you could have your father take a DNA test as well. And if your father's E1B1A, either way, you're still Israel. Rather it's through your father or through your own mitochondria, L3E. That's it. Jacob was one man. That's how you know all these other races are Israel, because only one man has one DNA. Okay? And he, and he gave that one DNA to his 12 sons. So all these other different off the wall races, stop it. It's genetically impossible. Jacob was one man, and he gave his, he passed his DNA on to us, and we keep passing it on to our seeds because of sin. When Most High said, and I, I won't get too far in the interview, but when Most High said he showed us about all nations, he wanted us to have, he wanted us to be separate from everyone. There's no other deity like ours in existence in this world, period. That's why, that's why he separated Esau and Jacob. When he told Rebecca, there are two nations in thy womb. Okay? And genetics, what does that mean? The Most High said there are two bloodlines. He separated them because he didn't want us to have the same bloodlines as the children of Esau. That's how, that's how important our DNA is to the Most High. And people need to understand that. See, they, they speak a lot because they're unlearned. They don't know. It's still new to a lot of them. And they're, they're afraid of it. They have the spirit of doubt and the spirit of fear. But what does, what does scripture tell us? He doesn't give us the spirit of fear. This should be our shining moment right now. Our chest should be out like this. Like, what? And we got the DNA to prove, you know, we're, we're Hebrews. We're from Northeast. I, I, I literally have the map showing my DNA going back to, to Israel and, and moving out. I, I, I literally have that map of, of, me, of my DNA doing that. I'm not special. I'm not the only one to be one day. <laughs> okay? I'm not special. I was just chosen to bring this forth, right? So that's the, that's, that's the only thing. Chronicles 9 and 1 says that if you claim to be Israel, you have to have your bloodline established. And the only way to do that now because the, the genetic holy line was broken, when we made our final exodus out of Israel is through a DNA test. So now with that said, I established that the DNA of the original Hebrew Israelites were E1, B1, A, and sister, I guarantee you, no man can dispute that. No man. I don't care what his title is, and I'm not being arrogant. I'm just being factual. No man can dispute what I'm bringing forth. Because you, you see it every day how somebody was free from DNA that did it from a crime they didn't commit or, you know, how powerful DNA is. Well, guess what? I'm using that same DNA to free our people. How about that? Like, y'all have to raise up. <laughs> that land was promised to 
promised to the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Y'all got to get up out of here. And that's exactly what they did. So no, all African, all the Hermetic Africans have nothing to do with the Holy Land. See, the Ethiopians are from Cush. They're from Ham. What it is with the Ethiopians is that they're an ancient race that's been along for a long time. Yeah. Right? They've been along for a long time. A lot of them, they've got their converts. They've been practicing Torah for a long time. As a matter of fact, uh, King Shalom, he, he replaced a lot of the, uh, our people in Israel with the Ethiopians. He, he set them there. He put them there. But they're, they're not from there. Remember, remember Christ told the lady at the well? Like, man, you don't even know what you're talking about. Your people are, it's not your, your father's land. It's not your land. What are you talking about? Remember? He checked her. He checked that Ethiopian woman at the well. Because he's like, what? She was like, like, you don't even know what you're talking about. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he told her. You don't know what you're talking about. So, so basically, the Ethiopians are from Ham. They are Hamitic Africans. But a lot of them think that they're us. They think that they're us. But they're not. And I'm not, and I'm being, I'm not being disrespectful. And I, and I promise you, I'm not being disparaging. I'm just being totally real, speaking to our people. I'm telling y'all what it is. I'm not sugarcoating nothing. Well, the, the mere fact that they went to the doctor and brought them to the land, I think was sort of like a, uh, the land of Israel, is sort of like a, uh, like a no brainer. Because. They know uh, who we are, and I suppose they still planted them there in order to say, well, there are black people here, you know, yes. so we're not racist, and um, being, if, if any black person is trying to be legitimate, it would be guilty, and not be right. from America. Right. So yeah. Throw it in the front of the problem for That's right. And That's right. I can tell you, just from a uh, First, there is this glance at the whole thing being uh, a Negro from the United States. There is a spirit in him that is totally unlike Black from America. That's right, that's and, right. Uh, it's, right. It's, you know, you read the Bible, you read the scriptures, you listen to the stories, the descriptions of how they were, they just don't seem to embody what a Negro in their life would have ever been. Right. could ever be because they, they're quite docile and they're beautiful people but uh, it does not inspire you the idea of a Hebrew Israel like we're totally right. totally different and mm -hmm. obvious to me that um, you know we're just nothing alike and they could not be uh, mm -hmm. they could not be the real one right so, right go on uh, um, yeah, but just to kind of add to that, um, the Hermetic Africans, they, 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 the Ethiopians, they're from Kush, okay? Straight up. I mean, look at them. They, they, they're not Negroes. The, the, the Zonovan specifically said that they are from Ham, and their genetics prove that. There's a, um, there's a small percentage of Ethiopians actually possess the E1B1A. Let me just say that for the record, a small percentage. What does that mean? Sometimes about history, some you know, some Hebrew had a child or whatever with, with an Ethiopian woman. That's not nothing good. That's not groundbreaking. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Moses was married to an Ethiopian. So that's not nothing groundbreaking. I mean, you know what I mean? You know, so you know, but but for the most part, they're B1B1B. They're Ham. They're Hermetic. And you know what's, 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 what's ironic about that? They're the ones that started that whole lie about us being the curse of Ham. Ironically, that that, that started in the Babylonian Talmud. Yeah, they started that. They know, like you said, they know who we are. Everyone knows who's accepted. Right. Pretty much, basically. Yeah, there you go. But, but it's a bad secret, though, because cause the most high is raising up people, you know, like myself and, you know, a few others. You know, here, here's the thing that, and I'm going to get this out, especially with our people. I think it's very important. It's, it's one thing to, to state the facts. You know, but, but when, you, when you mix the facts with a bunch of rhetoric, it t people, our people are not going to listen to you. You understand that our, our people are not going to listen to you. I did a video, and I was just going to speak on this real quick. And I was talking about how, you know, screw each other so we should not afford or, or hate uh, any of mind, basically. And, you know, and then he said, well, you know, God hated Esau, and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, well, listen. If the Most High literally did hate Esau, that's not what he told us to do. We are servants. 
Okay, and there's no scripture in verse where we are admonished to to, 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 to hate anyone. Or basically, the Bible says that in a nutshell, the Most High is the potter, we are the clay. Our job is not to question him, but basically do what he says. And that's I E follow his laws, statutes, and commandments, right? And be good servants. Okay? You know, we, 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 we you know, observe the uh, Sabbath, right? And everything that was put forth before our people and, and get away from all these heathenistic Gentile ways. I mean, our people are worse than heathens. I love them. Don't get me wrong, I love them. Uh, our, our people are worse than heathens. And we don't do, I'm just saying, we do, oh my God. On the day that's supposed to be set aside for the Most High, which is Saturday, that's the day we traditionally do what? We go to the club, we party, we in there, we dancing, you know, having a matter of sex, we just, I mean, all on his day. You see how messed up we are? But we were taught that. You understand? We didn't come away with any sense of that. We were taught that. You understand? I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking that for a second. Almost 400 years of being taught that, yeah, you go and party on Saturday, and after all that, get drunk, then on Sunday, you go to church. Sunday don't mean nothing for the most time. Some of them need a thing. Well, they, they, 